and welcome to another episode of Ramblings with me, Lorna Romanenghi, your host and guide to the wonderful world of jewellery. Today I will be discussing the difference between a goldsmith and a silversmith. So one of the reasons why I decided to address this, um, this topic is because it's often uh, a question that I get asked at trade fairs and at exhibitions and shows uh, when people don't quite know how to categorise me and they almost want to call me a goldsmith because they can see that I make jewellery but a lot of my stuff is made out of silver so they call me a silversmith and it's often a point of confusion and it's often a point where a lot of mistakes kind of are made but it is a very confusing topic so I thought I would explain it to you and just simplify it and hopefully it might be something that's a bit interesting for you. So I think the best way to um, go with this is to actually take you back to when goldsmithing and silversmithing as terms were coined and when it when it all started and then it kind of I think makes sense as to why we still call them that way now. So basically um, goldsmithing and silversmithing started in medieval times as goldsmiths and silversmiths. I mean you always had goldsmiths and silversmiths to an extent um, even back to ancient Roman times and uh, ancient Egyptian times but the actual terms of goldsmith and silversmith uh, weren't really coined until medieval times when you started getting uh, proper makers so you got blacksmiths you got stonemasons you got silversmiths you got goldsmiths so this is where it all started and often the local um, silversmith would also be the local goldsmith because there are a lot of techniques that are used that are kind of interchangeable. Sorry, I'm just changing around a bit. Uh, so yeah, often it would be the same person. However, um, they are two different skills. So basically, um, you would go to a goldsmith if you wanted a piece of jewellery to be made. So um, traditionally, when people went and got a piece of jewellery made, most of the times it would be made out of gold. So you just think of um, your traditional wedding band, and that was the kind of piece of jewellery that was most commissioned back then. Um, so again, that would, that would be primarily made in gold because the piece is small enough that you could afford that piece of gold for that purpose. Uh, and so yes, the, the profession was defined by the most common material used for pieces of jewellery to be made. Uh, however, if they wanted a bowl made or a chalice or, I mean, you think of all the chalices that are present in churches, that sort of thing, something that's bigger, uh, a big, bigger object, often boxes like jewellery boxes and so on. They would, if you're wanting something to be made that's special, and again, it's, it's quite commemorative, quite grand. A lot of families used these objects to kind of show their wealth and they would even be gifted and so on. Um, but that you would go to a silversmith for. And again, it determines the products that they make. However, they classified them by the most common material that um, they would use for their creations, which at the time was silver. Because technically you could make an entire bowl out of gold uh, and you could make a box out of gold and all that, but it would not be affordable even to this day. Um, you could do it and a silversmith could work in gold if they wished. However, the most common material for raising vessels and for making boxes and so on uh, was and still is silver. So this is a classification that has kind of come throughout the ages and they're terms that never changed since then. Um, but the idea of what a goldsmith is and what a silversmith is now has changed considerably 
because a lot of new metals have come to light, uh, the economy is a bit different as well, the idea of jewellery just being for an elite class is now not no longer the case, jewellery has become something for, for everyone and everyone wants something in metal and as I said a lot of more alloys and a lot more metals have come into existence so um, just classifying a goldsmith as someone that works in gold is very limiting because you'd not really be including a whole load of goldsmiths that work in different materials. For example now a metal that is more prestigious than gold is platinum but Obviously, if you work in platinum, you're still a goldsmith. So basically, the rule that kind of you go by now is if you make jewellery, you are a goldsmith. Uh, and by jewellery, I kind of mean if you are, if you make metal based jewellery. So if you're using goldsmithing techniques, so the way that you work is the same way that a goldsmith, a traditional goldsmith would work in, then that classifies you as a goldsmith. But I, the general rule is if you're a jeweller, you work in metal, you are a goldsmith. And if you make boxes or if you make vessels, you make bowls, then you are a silversmith, no matter what metal you use, because the techniques are still the same. So basically, this, this is the, the breakdown of the difference between a goldsmith and a silversmith. And I thought just to give you something a bit more to, to go by and something to look at, um, I wanted to share with you some of my favorite contemporary jewelers and silversmiths that you might want to check out and just see what contemporary goldsmithing and what contemporary silversmithing look like nowadays opposed to the traditional ring and bowl that we all know. So I would like to start with um, some silversmiths that I really admire. So an example of someone that makes traditional um, bowls and she's a traditional silversmith but with a contemporary bent and a contemporary design and a new way of actually creating her vessels is Megan Falconer who not only makes her own vessels and bowls but she makes her own hammers and her own equipment which is fantastic so um, check her out her work is absolutely beautiful. Another one is William uh, Romerill. He is a very unusual silversmith in the sense that he makes objects and he makes very unique objects that um, have something of the absurd about them. Um, I don't think I could do it justice describing them, but for instance, there's a very, very interesting way of sharpening a pencil that he has come up with. And it has all been made with traditional silversmithing techniques and some jewellery techniques in there as well. But he is an absolutely astounding silversmith, so please go and have a look. It's very, very interesting stuff. Uh, and then I would like to mention Eve Coburn because she is a silversmith, she makes vessels, she makes bowls. She also is a jeweller, she's also a goldsmith because she does also make jewellery. But her primary uh, aspect is um, silversmithing. But she is a very contemporary maker and she uses new techniques uh, that are being um, currently injected into the jewellery and uh, silversmithing um, arena and she uses 3D printing. So again her work's very beautiful and very unique and I would definitely check her out if you're interested in 3D printing and that sort of thing. But I thought I'd shout out to, th um, I'll be posting underneath this video um, a whole load of different jewellers and silversmiths that you might be interested in looking at that also have different approaches used different metals and so on but I thought I'd pick these three because they kind of categorize the different aspects of contemporary jewellery um, of, there are many more but the, these are kind of the the breakdown of someone that's a bit more traditional someone that doesn't just make vessels he makes objects and someone that works with new um, techniques so I'm going to be doing the same for jewellery and um, the first person that I'd like to uh, talk about is um, Eve Balashova. 
and she works again in 3D printing. She's a goldsmith, but she 3D prints um, elements of her work and combines them with um, jewellery techniques to make some very unique, very colourful jewellery. So I definitely have a look at her. And then I would like to mention Scott McIntyre, who is not only an amazing maker and designer, he's, uh, he's my mentor and I really, uh, I really, really love his work. Um, he has been trained as a traditional goldsmith, um, so his work is absolutely impeccable. Uh, but also he doesn't, he often says that he doesn't consider himself a designer, but I would disagree with, with that because his work has a very contemporary design feel to it and it is very innovative, I feel, and it kind of captures his, um, his aesthetic and his flow and it is just absolutely elegant and beautiful and it captures motion in, in all his work, I feel, and it's absolutely astounding. So yeah, check out Scott McIntyre's work. And then lastly, I would uh, just advise you if you fancy having a look at my work. I, uh, I work in a mixture of um, different materials that are considered to be um, not traditional to goldsmithing. So I work primarily for my bigger creations. I work in silver and I work in fire stained titanium, which introduces a lot of color to my work. Um, but the way that I create my work, I do it all by hand, all through traditional goldsmithing techniques. Um, so again, I'm kind of mixing something that is new and emerging, especially with new materials, but I love traditional making. Everything that I do is completely made by hand, even all my chains that are in my larger pieces, they're all handmade. And I absolutely love titanium, even though it's, it's not a material that's traditionally used in jewellery making and in, in goldsmithing, um, and is often used for machine parts and um, space station parts and that sort of thing. Um, I also had a man that was interested in my work because uh, his hip was made of titanium, that sort of thing. It's, it's not usually a material that is seen to be in jewellery, but I think if you have a look at some of my work, I think you'll understand why I use it, apart from the fact that it's very light, it's very versatile, it's easy to clean, it's easy to maintain, it's, it's virtually indestructible, but it is so elegant and delicate and you can get naturally some amazing colours with it. So I'm absolutely in love with it. But just to show you, I work in silver, I work in titanium, but I am a goldsmith. I know, it's confusing. So I hope you found this episode interesting and informative and I'm looking forward to seeing you all soon for my uh, next video. Thank you all and goodbye.